this our first Black History Month celebration since 2020. Um, and for those of you who do not know me, my name is Christian Cambridge. I am the current uh, Black Employees Association president. Uh, also on the board with me uh, is Deborah Hill, as well as Tony Foster. Um, I do want to thank all of our partners for this year. Um, so this is a partnership, not just the Black Employees Association. We also partnered with our council districts, uh, Council District 9, Council District 8, the mayor's office, and uh, certainly I do want to acknowledge the Port of Long Beach for uh, helping us put together this event. Um, they were pretty vital in helping us to really move this along and uh, to develop and establish what we think is going to be a great program um, and event for everyone. I also want to thank everyone for joining us here today. Uh, so with that, uh, I do want to be brief. As far as the Black Employees Association, we have been around for quite some time. Uh, the Black Employees Association started in 1993 as the Black Managers Association, and then we reactivated it in 2018. Uh, we really focus on mentorship, uh, professional development, uh, professional workshops, um, and scholarship. That's a really, that's a really big um, part of the Black Employees Association, really where a lot of our focus is, especially this year. I do want to also highlight um, a couple of uh, those who are with us today who will also be speaking um, to really highlight a lot of our leaders here uh, at City Hall and in the Long Beach community. So what I do want to do is uh, invite uh, one of my colleagues, um, his name is Ari Moisanini. Um, to join us and you know give some words remarks really just uh, highlighting who he is as an individual um, he is associated with the port of long beach and uh for us to continue this program so ari i don't oh you're right next to me all right ari, ari go ahead and uh join us thank you good afternoon everyone Today's theme is a vision of the future. And as we look to the future, I want to take a moment to recognize the past. I want to recognize a few individuals like Bailey Johnson, Abraham Klieg, Amanda Klieg, and Warren Dubois Jordan. Warren Dubois Jordan, as a matter of fact, who was sworn in as a Long Beach police officer on August 1st, 1948, was the second African-American officer hired by the department, the first to complete a full tenured service of 28 years with the Department of Long Beach Police. He retired in 1976, and by no surprise, he was honored, respected, and seen as one of the brightest individuals of this city. He was not surprised by evil, nor was he paralyzed by despair. Instead, he exhibited bravery, courage, and dignity Remembering those that came before us will help us celebrate and recognize the future, not just for some, but for all those that are here and a part of this great city of Long Beach. And with that, I'd like to take a couple moments to recognize some of our amazing individuals that help contribute to the city and start off by recognizing Linda Tatum, who's not here today. Linda is due, not here due to a prior commitment with the city of Long Beach. She's actually supporting the children's story time for Black History Month, which is currently underway at the Mark Twain Library. Linda Tatum is an assistant city manager for the city of Long Beach. She was selected for the position after serving two years as development services director and three years as a planning manager for the city, where she oversaw planning, building safety, code enforcement, housing, and neighborhood services. She is serving as the president of Long Beach Community Investment Corporation and the city entity that leverages funding for affordable housing and development in community. Linda has a master's in urban and regional planning from Florida State University and more than 30 years of public service support in the public sector and planning experience. Prior to Long Beach, she was the acting, city, uh, she was the acting director of economic and community development and concerning for planning managers for the city of Inglewood where she managed redevelopment of the Forum of Madison Square Garden, the Hollywood Park project, and 300-acre mixed-use projects, including 3,000 residential units 
30 acres of park, and more than half a million square feet of retail and state development services. Linda's experience includes teaching planning. She also has experience working for the University of, uh, or Cal State University of Fullerton. She works as a planning consultant and she also serves uh, and helps support for the cities of both Inglewood, Culver City, and Santa Ana. Linda also serves as the uh, member of the California chapter of the APA board for more than 10 years as the president and for the Planning Foundation. She's a former planning accredited board site visitor, a member of the California Planning Roundtable, a planner em uh, emeritus for the network and former board member of the National APA Foundation. Linda has risen to a fellow for public leadership and has inducted into the AICP fellow for 2018. Linda currently serves as a board member as well for the National Planning Accreditation Board. Linda is a vision of our future. Next, I'd like to highlight Cynthia Gudry. Cynthia is our director of the Long Beach Airport. Nicely nestled in Southern California as an award-winning airport with unique open air concourse, Long Beach Airport is served by a handful of commercial carriers and is also one of the busiest general aviation airports in the country. Long Beach Airport prides itself on providing fresh new facilities and amenities, bringing these ease of travel for its customers and Ms. Gudry and her team will lead the next phase of improvements, adding to the respected legacy of Long Beach Airport. Ms. Gudry is a professional engineer licensed from the state of California and has 30 years of planning and engineering experience. Working for the city of Los Angeles for 18 years at the World Airports of Los Angeles with several years as Deputy Director, Deputy Executive Director, excuse me, of Planning and Development Group. She also serves on the board of directors for California Transportation Foundation, the Los Angeles chapter of Women Transportation Seminar, and a member of the Airport Minor Minority Advisory Council Airport Leadership Collective. Ms. Gudry holds an MBA from Pepperdine University and a bachelor's in science degree in civil engineering from the Uni University of California, Irvine. Cynthia is a vision of our future. I'd like to invite Cynthia if she'd like to come up and say a few words. Well, good afternoon. All right, first, I just want to say a few words. Um, and at first, I'll start out by thanking our great Mayor Richardson. Yes. Councilman Austin. Councilwoman Rick Sodi. Our city leadership and the Black Employees Association for really bringing together today's celebration. Please give everyone a round of applause. You know, as, as your airport director, uh, I have uh, the honor and privilege to, to steward our award-winning airport. And I really am very fortunate to serve our great city, to live in the city of Long Beach, and also to be among so many others in recognizing not just our past, but our future as well. But I have to just take a, a quick second, a couple of seconds to really acknowledge uh, a couple of folks. One, uh, my parents who came from a little bitty town in the South and who instilled in me great values and instilled in me to push forward no matter what life brings you. And, and I want to say that in honor of, of them and their perseverance. But really also to the many, 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 many fearless leaders of our past, their strength, their courage, those who dared to be the first so that there could be more of us. They kept pushing, learning and striving in spite of the daily, daily struggle that many of us have seen them have and really to provide us with an opportunity. So I'm encouraged today and, and where we are and, and really looking forward to our future as collectively we learn how to engage, educate, and inspire one another, but also to be there 
to support our next generation of leaders. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. That was very inspirational. For our last individual, I'd like to recognize Reginald Harrison, Reggie. Reggie is our director of the city for the Long Beach Department of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Communication, or the DPEC. Appointed as the founding director of the DPEC in 2014, Reggie oversees the department operations, which includes citywide emergency management for 911 emergency communication for the police, fire and emergency medical services, and the city's Homeland Security Grants program, which allocates millions of dollars each year for disaster preparedness training and equipment acquisition. Prior to his current appointment, Reggie has served as a host of leadership positions during his 25-year tenure with the city of Long Beach. In 2001, he was appointed the city's deputy city manager, and prior to that, he served as the city's housing authority bureau manager, economic development bureau manager, and acting director of the community development department, and acting director of the planning building department, and acting director of the Long Beach airport. Wow. what! a number of opportunities, unbelievable. In 2014, Reggie was recognized by leadership in Long Beach for being one of the 25 most impactful alumni, having the biggest impact on the Long Beach community over the past 25 years. Additionally, in 2014, Reggie received media attention for his leadership in making Long Beach one of the few cities in the country to serve as a beta site for testing of the earthquake early warning system. Further notable accomplishments include as the DPEC's director in, uh, of, of earthquake, sorry, the DPEC director include the creation of the alternate 911 center in the event that the primary site is inoperable, the implementation of an early war alert warning for Long Beach, mass notification system to issue emergency alerts to, res to residents and businesses of Long Beach, participation in the launch of the text to 911 system and update of numerous city disaster preparedness plans. Reggie is now retired, uh, re I'm sorry, Reggie is a retired Lieutenant Colonel for this, <laughs> from the, the California National Army. Uh, he is not retired, he is actually right over here. <laughs> he has a master's degree in business administration and is an undergraduate degree in psychology. He and his family reside in Long Beach where he is an active participant in the community and a member of several boards and commissions. Reggie is a vision of our future. And with that, I'd like to invite him to come up if you'd like to say a few words. Wow. Well, Ari, thanks for hanging in there with that long introduction. Good heavens. <laughs> I'm not quite retired, not yet. <laughs> I think about it sometimes, but I'm not there yet. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I just want to say thank you, Kristen, to you and your team and to the mayor and the city council and everyone who's here to make this um, program possible. Thank you all so much for recognizing our Black History Month. It's uh, very, very important that we do that, that we honor our, honor our past and as, as, as Cynthia said, you know, look to the future as well with our, with our leadership. Um, I grew up uh, in the segregated South, South Carolina. I drank from the colored only water fountains. I went to the colored only bathrooms. I could not have imagined as a little boy uh, that I would aspire to so many leadership positions uh, in the city uh, of Long Beach, a city that really does try and thrive to do the right thing uh, every day. Thank you. So this month, um, we'll hear a lot about, you know, leaders standing on the shoulders of others, and 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 rightfully so. Uh, none of us got to these positions uh, alone. We all got here uh, with the help. Of, of others, and I'm really, really fortunate that I came to Long Beach at the right time and had in place the right leadership to help me. But as a leader, 
Sometimes you have to step out from the shadows of those great pioneers. Sometimes you have to go out and create the path forward um, for others. There is still much, much work to be done. There are politicians in Florida who believe that we should rewrite uh, black history. There are politicians who believe that the rights for African Americans to vote should be revisited on a periodic basis. And it is still unsafe for a black man to be pulled over for minor infractions. So we do indeed have a lot of work ahead of us. But I can also say that I am so fortunate and so happy that I work for a city, a city like the city of Long Beach, that is up to those challenges. Thank you all very much. All right, so um, one thing I do want to do is thank everyone for joining us again. I want to thank uh, our leaders, uh, some of which we've highlighted, as well as our leaders that are joining us here today. Um, I want to thank uh, the different city officials here. Um, I know I have spotted a few. I have Council Member Austin, Council Member Christina Duggan, Council Member Megan Kerr, Council Member Daryl Supernall, Council Member Doug Halbert. I also see Council Member Mary Zendejas uh, and uh, Council, we have uh, Council Member Cindy Allen um, and I'm, apologies if I'm missing anybody, uh, but these are the officials and leaders that I see in the crowd and I know we'll be joined by others. So thank you again. Um, it is an honor to be here in person after two years and excited to be here. It, today it's my honor to introduce four phenomenal people. The first one that I am going to start out with is, and I'm so excited because I, used, I got a chance to work with him for a long time when he was assigned to the port, is Chief Dennis Buchanan who is the first black and Latinx fire chief in the city of Long Beach. He's been serving us since November the 15th, 1993, and credits his passion for the community service as his inspiration for joining the fire service. For nearly three decades, Chief Cannon has embodied the Long Beach Fire Department's mission to improve the quality of life and safety in this community. Prior to being selected to lead the Long Beach Fire Department, Chief Buchanan served as the Deputy Chief of Support Services since January 2021. Before that, Chief Buchanan served many roles within the department, including firefighter paramedic, fire captain, battalion chief, and assistant chief. During his 18 years as a fire captain, Dennis spent eight years at the port woo -woo, in the hazmat program specialist position, and three years educating recruits in the fire academy. His most memorable experience remains to break bread with his brother and sisters inside the fire station. Chief Buchanan received his Bachelor of Science in Vocational Education from California State University, Long Beach, Go Beach. He recently served as the president of the Friends of the Long Beach Firefighters, a local nonprofit organization that supports community-based initiatives for the fire service. Chief Buchanan is a Southern California native growing up in West Covina. He has been married to his wife, Laura, for 29 years, and they have two adult children and reside in Long Beach. Fun fact, he played professional soccer internationally and enjoys backpacking and surfing and camping. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you my friend, Fire Chief Dennis Buchanan. Thank you, Bridget, for those kind words. Um, it is an honor, and I am just humbled to be the Fire Chief of the City of Long Beach. 
Uh, to be the fire chief in the city that I grew up, I mean, that I raised my family, a city that provided opportunity for me is just humble. Um, as a fire chief, I am looking forward to providing an opportunity, opportunity for our men and women to advance through promotions and training, but most importantly, to provide opportunity for our local youth to get employment and public safety. That opportunity was provided to me 29 years ago, and I'm gonna do the same to this local community here and give that opportunity to our local youth. In addition, uh, I'm looking forward to make sure that we address diversity in the department. I want our department to reflect the demographics of this city. And lastly, I want the department to engage more with the community, not only with the community, but all city departments, so we can move this department forward and the city. Thank you again, Bridget, for those kind words, and thank you so much, Reggie, for inviting me. I appreciate that, and I am just honored to be here. Thank you. Again, we want to thank Brown Suede for all that wonderful music. It was wonderful. So the last three speakers that will be closing the celebration out today um, are our council members and our mayor from the city of Long Beach. And I'm gonna go through and read their bios, and by the time I finished, uh, I think they should be joining us to just say a few remarks to close us out. The first council member you will hear from is council member Al Austin, who from his roots growing up in Detroit, Michigan, and around many African American leaders, public service was instilled in him. He has been active in the Long Beach community for many years. He has served as a board member for the Fairfield YMCA, an organization whose focus is programs and services that promote youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. He is a mentor to youth and has promoted programs such as Youth in Government, Hoops After Dark, and made available youth internship options within his office as a Long Beach City Council member. In addition to his community involvement, Council Member Austin sees the importance of education and knowledge building within the communities of color. As a distinguished alumnus of Long Beach City College and a graduate of the University of Laverne with a degree in public administration, Council Member Austin has sponsored HBCU college fairs, back to school events, and forums to encourage students to seek higher education opportunities and remove learning barriers for students in Long Beach City schools. During his tenure as a Long Beach City Council member, he has focused on creating a more sustainable, livable, and vibrant city. His policy priorities include homelessness and affordable housing, economic development, ethics and government transparency, equity and efficiency in city governments, and public safety. Council Member Austin's commitment to making Long Beach a better place for all is admirable and inspiring. The second council member we will hear from today is Council Member Dr. Rick Adi. For over a decade, Council Member Dr. Rick Odi has lived with her husband Keith and their two children in the DeForest Park neighborhood in North Long Beach. She has spent that time practicing civic leadership in Long Beach, serving on the DeForest Park Neighborhood Association Board, North Long Beach Neighborhood Alliance, the Uptown Property and Business Improvement District, Citizens Police Complaint Commission, and the Long Beach Planning Commission as chair. Council Member Dr. Rick ODI is focused on quality of life priorities that protect our citizens, strengthen our neighborhoods, and help our communities thrive. Prior to serving as a council member, she helped lead the city's health equity outreach and focus groups associated with the framework for race, racial reconciliation that is still being currently administered through the Long Beach Office of Equity. Council member Ricks, Dr. Ricks ODI graduated with honors from the University of Iowa, earning a bachelor's degree in microbiology. She earned her master's degree in public health epidemiology from the University of Michigan and her PhD from UCLA in epidemiology. Dr. Ricks Odie is currently the chair of the UCI Center for Statistical Consulting and the Institute for Clinical and Translational Science 
ICTS, Biostatistics, Epidemiology, and Research Design Unit. She is definitely someone I would have cheated on off of in high school. Dr. Rick Adi oversees general operations and strategic planning for the center and its consulting activities. As part of her work at the university, she helps lead the IT, I'm sorry, the ICTS Black Thriving Initiative, which is an initiative that recognizes and responds to anti-blackness as an existential threat to the mission of UCI as a public research university. The council member is very much looking forward to this year's Black History Month events, celebrating the rich heritage and the culture that is the Long Beach Black community. And the last person that we will be hearing from shortly is our newest mayor of the city of Long Beach, Mayor Rex Richardson, who is a husband, a father, and the 29th mayor of Long Beach. In 2014, Mayor Richardson became the youngest person in history elected to the city of Long Beach Council. In 2016, he was elected to a two-year term as vice mayor and also the youngest in city history. He was then elected to the Long Beach City Council in 2018 and re-elected as vice mayor in 2020. In November 2022, Mayor Richardson broke barriers once again as both the first black person and the first resident of North Long Beach in history to ever be elected to serve as mayor for the city of Long Beach. Mayor Richardson's history in Long Beach is grounded in empowering communities to have a seat at the table. He believes that everyone, no matter their circumstance, belongs an opportunity to thrive. He works to change the culture of a city hall to be smarter, more inclusive, more responsive, and to the needs of our neighbors, businesses, and families while ensuring an equitable future for all. Mayor Rex Richardson and his wife, Dr. Nina Richardson, are proudly raising their two daughters, Alina and Malia, in North Long Beach. And here they are coming out as we speak. So we have coming out first, <laughs> Council Member Al Austin. Thank you so much uh, for, for the warm introduction. Warm introduction, you guys. Um, and it's uh, so nice to, uh, to be here celebrating Black History Month uh, once again, 2023. So um, we usually start with a, with a little chant. And some of you guys might remember the, uh, the great, late, great James Brown, Godfather of Soul. He used to say, say it loud. Oh, man, no, 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 no. Say it loud. Okay, okay, okay. I was just, just checking, just checking. I want to thank uh, our, our uh, Black Employees Association, uh, my staff, the Ninth District staff, uh, for uh, putting this today's events together. Let's give them a big round of applause. And this is that time of year for us to uh, honor the many achievements of our, our ancestors, our, our um, those who have had a profound impact on our country uh, and the world, and uh, especially here in the city of Long Beach. And while we're familiar with household names, uh, like my family friend, um, Ms. Rosa Parks, uh, and Harriet Tubman, and Frederick Douglass, and Booker T. Washington, and I could go on and on and on. So many great figures who have really shaped us, and, and we stand on their shoulders today. Uh, we also have local figures like uh, Mother Doris Topsy Elvord and, and um, uh, my former council member D. Andrews, who's still with us, and so many others who, who laid the groundwork uh, for this city to be where it is today. Let's give them all a big round of applause. I, I, I challenge us all to recognize the uh, black history being made here every single day. The, the contributions that each and every one of you as city employees are, are contributing. Um, I see our, our, just left our first, or there he is, our first black mayor, Rex Richardson. I see our first black fire chief. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Uh, 
Uh, Reggie Harrison, I'm so glad to see you honored here today because you've been a trailblazer for so many years. I think you're the only person still left uh, standing from when I first got involved in the city. So um, thank you for your great career and, and uh, your service. Um, there are um, educators, uh, public uh, employees, city employees, school district employees, county employees, ind individuals who are shaping our, our, our public sphere uh, on a daily basis, working for the public in public service. Um, and and uh, we, we owe them all a great bit of gratitude. Doctors, engineers, laborers, scientists, artists, our people are lawyers, bankers, nurses, mail carriers, uh, and they're breaking boundaries every single day in, in every sphere, um, in academics, in athletics. Uh, I'm proud to be a black American. I'm proud, proud of the work uh, of, our, uh, of my, my, my forefathers, my grandparents, my parents. And I think we all should be. If we, we start with black history being in our family, right, and understanding uh, and appreciating those who came before us, um, and then looking at our neighbors and our community and beyond, I, I think we can, we can appreciate this, this time a, a lot more. And so these accomplishments really make up the foundation in which we stand on and continue to build. And, um, and I'm so thankful for, for, for you all. Uh, when we um, understand our past and our present, and we understand the path toward our vision to become a, a future, and our future becomes much clearer. When we work together, we can accomplish anything. We've had that message pretty much all day long today. And but we, where we get where we want to be, we won't select there won't be a select few leading the way. It won't be just the celebrities and the activists and the politicians. Uh, it'll be all of us working together and we need to continue to do so. Um, I wanna just say, I know it's uh, getting a little chilly out here and, and you all are looking forward to getting into a council meeting and hearing from the mayor. And so with no further ado, uh, I wanna thank you for your time. Look forward to celebrating uh, each and every day being black, but especially during the month of uh, February. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Austin. And our next council member I had the pleasure to meet and become friends with on the campaign trail, Council Member Dr. Jody Ricks Odie. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because um, I'm a Chicagoan and while it feels cold, I refuse to say it is cold. Um, today we are celebrating the rich history of black people in Long Beach in this country, and here in Long Beach we have a rich history of black culture. Um, we have produced some influential, we talk about celebrating our past, we have produced some influential recording artists such as Nat King Cole, John Lee Hooker, and Thelma Houston. We also produce black actors like Carl Weathers, who you may know was Action Jackson um, on the original Apollo Creed. We also produce one of the greatest baseball players of all time, Tony Gwynn. Long Beach is perhaps most famous for producing a large number of influential rap artists like Snoop Dogg, uh, Warren G, right? Everybody's favorite song, Regulate. Um, you know, who could forget that, right? Well, maybe we need to have that as the next, next year's theme song. Um, and in the present day, Long Beach still punches above its weight in the rap game, producing artists like Vince Staples, whose most recent album, Ramona Park, Broke My Heart. Is it raining? was rated as one of the best albums of the year in any genre by highly esteemed music publication, publications such as Complex and Vulture. And the Vince Staples show wrapped up filming in the 9th District just a couple of days ago in the Ramona Park neighborhood in the 9th District. Today we build uh, the future we want to see in our black community and we must also understand where we came from. At the turn of the 20th century, many African Americans migrated to the West Coast seeking refuge from racism and violence in the, great, in the Deep South. However, when they arrived, they found a lot of the same here. They found that the Klan had open rallies here in the city of Long Beach, including a 1926 parade that had 30,000 Klan members. They found white resistance to the efforts of black Americans to secure rental and home ownership housing here, um, which we still see the vestiges of today. Even to this day, racial disparities remain across all major indicators. As a resident with a background in public health, I was honored to help lead the health equity conversations around the framework for rec racial reconciliation in 2020, a historic document that really codified the nature of the city's relationship with its black residents with a lot of input from you all as city employees. 
reviewing and updating laws and policies that are outdated and have disproportionate impacts on black residents is what's important here. But despite all these challenges, we fought for our place in this community and built a vibrant culture. And because of this work and the work of countless others, I, as the first black woman to serve on council outside the 6th District, sitting next to our first black mayor of Long Beach, right? Just th less than three years after the passage of the framework for racial reconciliation. And while we still have a long way to go, and before we end systemic racism, I'm incredibly proud of the progress we have made. We as black Americans in the city have left an indelible mark on the fabric of this community. And I am also looking forward to the challenges of the work ahead, and because it means we are building a better Long Beach for the next generation, which includes my son Cohen, who will be five in June, and my daughter Chloe, who will be two in March. Thank you so much. And it is my sheer honor to introduce to you our first black mayor of the city of Long Beach, Mayor Rex Richardson. All right. Let's hear from Bridget Lewis, who's also a councilwoman in the city of Torrance. Hey folks, it is raining, so we are gonna move quick. Uh, let's see, Fire Chief, come on up. Let's see, uh, I see Teresa, I see Cynthia, Jose, Hosea. Let's bring our black employees. Oh, well, thank you. Let's bring our city managers, our black management, our council, two council members. Everybody come on up, let's do this. So, I'll tell you, it was these people who, you know, taught me the way. I, you know, we wouldn't have made this history in 125 years it wasn't, if it weren't for our community coming together. Come on out. It's okay. It's all right. We ain't going to melt. It's all good. Jim Wilson, Clarence Smith, Doris Topsy Elvert, D. Andrews, Laura Richardson, Steve Neal, Al Austin, Rex Richardson, Johnny Ricks Odie. These are all the black council members our city has ever, has ever had. And today, uh, we have, we're proud of our representation across departments from our fire department, our city, manage, city manager's office. Uh, across our departments, you see that these are dedicated public services, servants making a difference here in Long Beach. And everybody can make a difference, right? It doesn't have to be Black History Month. We can, we can make a difference every day. I was 26 when I started in the city of Long Beach. I, get, I was given an opportunity by then Council Member Steve Neal, who was the first African American elected anywhere outside the central Long Beach area. And that opportunity allowed me to put down roots, you know, raise my family here, have my daughters here, join the ranks of city employment, understand the power of public employment, how you can get a pension, how you can have health care benefits and take care of your family while serving your own community. That's what we have to continue to make sure happens for the future, that we hold the door open so that the workforce of our future reflects the diversity and the hope of our future here in Long Beach. Joni gave a great speech, Al gave a great speech. What I picked up was Al talked about the history and Joni talked about the future, right? And we have to think about all of those things together because we have a responsibility to hold the door open and to submit our city to the next generation in, in a better condition, in better hands than it was when we received it. And so that's what we all have to do together. Not just during Black History Month, every month, <laughs> not just Black History Month, we have work to do to make sure that no matter what part of town you come from, uh, no matter your zip code, no matter how you pray, who you love, uh, you, we know that the city has your back and that we are a team of dedicated public services, servants who are up to the challenge. You know, we've gone through so much over the last few years. Three years ago when the pandemic was here, we leaned in, we looked at the data, we saw how, you know, Latino communities, black communities were disproportionately impacted. When we saw what happened with George Floyd, we had unrest in our, in our city. We stepped up the next day, all of us, painting out graffiti, sweeping up glass, boarding up windows the next day, and then having a real conversation to deal with racial inequity in our city, the framework for reconciliation leading to the Racial Equity Reconciliation Initiative, which has gone on to become a region-wide and national model in many, in many respects on how you deal with and talk about racial equity. We know when we look at our health department that's leading, I said I wasn't gonna talk long, but I got into it. Uh, we, you know, we're, proud, we're proud that we've sort of leaned in our health department you know, who we used to have to fight to keep it every year, now they're leading the way and showing that we can talk about issues like race and we can talk about issues like gender and sexuality. Uh, and what it really comes down to is belonging. We're a city throughout the years has really invested and believed in belonging as a community. Whether you're a refugee coming from overseas, 
whether you're an immigrant to our community, first generation, whether you've come here, you know, as a, a part of the great migration from the South to the West Coast, how many black families came out to the West Coast. We are a city that believes in belonging. That is a challenge that we have to continue to commit to over and over again. It's not something you get right once. We have to continue working together because that's what we do. That's our plight. That's what we do as a city. Thanks so much. We're going to get out of this rain. Happy Black History Month, folks. Council meeting starts imminently. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. We hope you enjoyed this event.